What is going on, Swoopers? Welcome back to another episode of Swoop Luke. In this episode, we'll be finally reviewing Collingwood's 2021 season. Before we jump into the review, be sure to follow me on all my social media accounts, mainly Twitter and Instagram, the only ones I'm kind of, kind of using at the moment. They're all Swoop Luke. If you are a new Swooper, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. And if you are a returning Swooper, welcome back. Thank you so much for rejoining me. Let's just jump into this review. Ooh la la. So from an amazing game against West Coast in the first final to getting smashed by Geelong in the second final, Collingwood's off-season troubles, drama started then. It went into that uh, trade debacle. We saw it with um, Stevenson, Trelaw, uh, Phillips R2. We're not really going to delve much on it. But from there, the season kind of snowballed into a 17th place finish for the 2021 season. 17th in that 18-team competition is the lowest Collingwood has finished. It's the lowest Collingwood has finished ever, technically, but I guess, you know, those couple of wooden spoons that we won, most recent being in 1999, uh, finishing 16th in a 16th team comp, is, I guess, technically a lower finish. But if you're going by purely numbers and teams and stuff, yes, 17 is lower than 16. But that's neither here nor there. Let's talk about what the hell happened this season. So we finished the season with six wins and 16 losses. We went on a couple of loss sprees. We lost five in a row in the first half of the season. Um, and look, after the first couple of rounds, it was hard to determine what was going on with Collingwood. We lost to the Western Bulldogs in, in round one by a couple of goals. But then we had a really, really, really good game against Carlton the next week. Pretty much smashed them in every facet of the game. So then we're sitting one and one. And you're going, okay, that Bulldogs game, a bit of a blip on the radar so early on. But look how we played against Carlton. If we can see this kind of Collingwood, this you know great defensive unit, but was also able to uh, attack the ball and attack the attacks, attack the goals as well, we could see us you know pushing for a sort of top eight spot. And then honestly, in probably our, one of our worst losses of the season, it all came crashing down in round three. And you're probably thinking to yourself, how can a whole season get derailed in round three? We were up by four or five goals against Brisbane. We lose by a point with a kick after the siren because we just let them, you know, chip away at us throughout the game. And that round three game against Brisbane would sum up Collingwood's season. In a sense that we would put in effort for a little bit and then no effort and let the other team either come back and win or we would just drop off. We saw that in you know, the Brisbane game, obviously. Um, the Geelong game later on in the season where we didn't score a goal for the first half, but we only lost by 10 points because we showed up in the last quarter. The Richmond game as well, the first three quarters, we, went, uh, we were doing okay. We were playing good. We weren't putting the scores on the board and then kicked seven goals in the last quarter. Um, the Giants game we should have won. These sort of games like this, has been a trend for Collingwood in the last few seasons where, like I just said, we would either have three mediocre quarters and then a good last quarter, or we would be up by five or six goals, but never put on that, you know, sixth, seventh, or eighth goal to kind of put teams away. We would still leave teams um, within an inch of their life able to claw back out of the hole that we dug for them and go on and give us a bit of a a bit of a harder game, or even go on to win, you know, I don't have to tell you the numerous examples of being five goals up and losing games for that winning position. So I'm not going to go game by game. The lie detector determined that was a lie. Oh! But after that Brisbane game, we go down to a really undermanned GWS that we should have beaten, right? We should have beaten the Giants. Uh, get done by West Coast. Get done by Essendon on Anzac Day. And then, in what you voted one of our worst games of the season... 
we get done by a young Gold Coast side at the MCG when most of the team hadn't played at the MCG before. How does that work out? That was probably, you know, with that um, uh, with that Brisbane game, that, that round three Brisbane game, our worst game of the season. That was absolutely horrible. Thankfully, our five-game losing streak got stopped after we just beat the Kangaroos. We beat them by three goals um, in Steve-O's return game. I think he kicked two or three. We get pumped by Sydney in another horrible showing. Lose to Port Adelaide by a point. Lose to Geelong by 10, which I just mentioned. And then this is where the wheels start turning and there's some murmurings. Is Buckley out? Is he going to see out the rest of the season? What's going on? What's going on? We go to Adelaide. We become the Dirty Pies 2.0. We beat Adelaide. We come back and it's like the Melbourne game is Buckley's last game. And as those conversations unfolded, and particularly over the last couple of weeks and last few days with uh, Graham and Nathan, it became clear that Nathan's time as coach would finish this year and that uh, we wouldn't be going on into 2022. And it kind of hits you and you go, what the hell? Buckley, Nathan Buckley, Collingwood legend, he is leaving mid-season. We're parting ways with him. And that's it. And that is Buckley's legacy at Collingwood. For now, done. And that kind of took everyone by surprise. Because yes, look, we knew Buckley probably wouldn't have coached next season. But we didn't think he was going to leave midway through. Alas, we go on and verse Melbourne, the top of the table um, leaders. And we beat them convincingly. We beat them convincingly. And we showed, one, we showed Buckley, you know, thanks for the memories. Two, we showed everyone, like supporters and stuff, we're actually a good football team when we turn it on. We just didn't turn it on enough this season. Could it have been, like I said, a snowball effect from the start of the season? Could it have been just one of those seasons where we just needed to reset get some of the new kids in, blood some of the new kids, and then, you know, work on from 2022 onwards. In the second half of the season, in the second half of the season, when Rob Harvey takes over, we start seeing a bit more of an attacking play style by the Pies, something that Buckley wasn't really implementing um, this season and a bit of last season as well. More runs off halfback, more counter-attacking, quick direct avenues to goal. Again, Forward line was kind of letting us down, but midfields, you know, not being able to link up with the forward line was letting us down as well. I've talked about that numerous times. But in that second half of the season under Rob Harvey, we only won, I'm just trying to count them now, two games. That ins that really, 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 really good win against the West Coast Eagles, which was one of my favorite wins of the season. And that Richmond game that I spoke of before where we put on seven goals in that last quarter, but we played good throughout the game. But again, we spurred to life in that um, last quarter to go on and win. Six wins, 16 losses, 17th on the ladder. If you look at that on paper, you go, shit, you know, that was a horrible season. That's, look, 17th, I'm not going to shoot it. 17th is a, is shit. No one wants to finish bottom four of the ladder. You always want to be pushing for finals, you know? And... It just wasn't our year. Like I said, it just wasn't our freaking year. There was too too much stuff going on in the background. You know, the board, uh, Jeff Brown, the True Law trade, uh, murmurs of Buckley leaving. Who's going to coach us next season? Rob Harvey, what's going on? We haven't appointed a coach. It was just crazy. And, you know, the players can sit there and say, well, you don't listen to it. We don't listen to it. We don't listen to it. But, you know. They're at the club every day. They're going to hear it. And, you know, it might play on their mind. It might not. We, we, we will never know. But from the outside looking in, it looks like that's what happened. We just, especially in those last couple of games, we just dropped off. Tired legs. Um, but to be fair, we had such a young team. The one positive about finishing so low um, in a season is that it's probably due to the fact that you're blooding lots of new kids. A team like Geelong who have, you know, 12 over 30-year-old players, 
I'm probably going to finish down below because they're a good, experienced side. You finish down below because you've got new, new, um, new kids playing, a new game plan, or a new coach. You know, see uh, Adelaide, see uh, North Melbourne. I guess to an extent, Geelo uh, Gold Coast as well. We debuted nine kids. Nine. Insane. Ollie Henry, Finn McRae, Caleb Poulter, Bo McCreary, Trent Bianco, Jay Rantel, Tom Wilson, Anton Tohill, Jack Ginevan. Nine. <laughs> I didn't fuck that up. Nine players we debuted. And they're beauties. They're all beauties in their own right. Unfortunately, Tohill uh, only played that one game. And he's back to Ireland to pursue a doctorate in doctoring, medical science, whatever it's called. So, you know, well done, man. That That's amazing to even come here and then go back. That's just crazy. Good luck to you. But all the other kids... Look, look when you look at them, you just think, okay, we finished 17. Fuck, that's shit. That's shit. That's shit. Look at the kids, though. We're going to be okay. Our, our under-22 players are crazy good. Uh, I think Jordan Noble's under 22. Uh, Isaac Quainor, Josh Dacos as well. Mixed those kids in with them. Trump Yanko played, I think, 13 or something games in his... Technically, his second season, but first season uh, debutant because he didn't play um, last year. Same with Jay Rantel as well. Caleb Poulter's going to be immense. Bo McCreary, a diamond in the rough. Jack Ginevan off the rookie list, just kicking goals for fun, even in the EFL as well. Um, Tom Wilson, we could be our successor off the halfback if given a little bit more time and a little bit more um, time to like hone his skills and, and, and stuff like that. Finn McRae, we know what his brother does. He's going to be better than his brother. I'm telling you that right now. The way he gathers the ball, his footy IQ. Um, just, it is going to be fun to watch. And if you take out one positive from this year, make it these kids, right? But when you finish 17, look, there's not really a lot of positives besides the kids, especially when you give away pick two, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. But in regards to this season, if we're grading it from an A to an F, I want to give it a an E. I don't want to give it a fail because we've blooded so many kids and we've seen so many good kids. So it's not a fail. It's an E plus at best. At worst, an E. I think, yeah, it sucks that we finished seventeenth. We finished. We always want to play finals. I'm getting jealous watching them play finals footy, and I hate finals because of what it does to me inside. It burns me up. But I want to be there. You know, I want to be there in the big time. We all do. This year was just a reset year. We lost so many games. A bit of instability. We will get it back. Let's talk about the future. So the first thing we're going to talk about is trading and drafting in the offseason. We know that we are guaranteed Nick Dacos. There will be a video coming out closer to the draft about Nick Dacos and um, how we get him, how the draft works, etc, etc, etc. But the long story short is that Nick Dacos is committed to us as a father-son. If he goes, uh, gets spitted on at pick one, we have to find... Um, 2,400 points as opposed to 3,000 points. Pick swapping, uh, trading players for picks, stuff like that. We'll get him. No worries. Pick two is a bit of a longer story. We traded our first round pick to GWS last year for a couple of their picks. That landed us McMahon and Caleb Poulter. So two good gets because we know that if we had kept pick two, that would have been used for Nick Dacos anyway. So get rid of it and, um, you know, Wash your hands of it. Okay, GWS get it. Big deal. It is what it is. We still get the number two pick in the preseason draft if some players fall to us. Pretty much, it's going to be in the draft. Nick Dacos, Yui Dib as well. Hopefully, if he doesn't... I feel like if he doesn't get bid on in the top 20, top 25, we will take him. If he gets bid on in the top 20, top 25, I don't think we might have enough points for him, but we will see what happens. In regards to trading and who we bring in, our hands are really tied with those salary cap issues, not having enough um, draft picks to kind of trade as well. There's been talks of Lipinski from the Bulldogs coming. He's a bit of a winger, a bit of a half forward as well. 
Uh, Sam Wiedemann, the Wiedemann name coming back as our full forward. I think that might get done. Maybe he goes through the preseason draft. We take him with that pick two. Dylan Stevens from Sydney, I think, doesn't get done. That's another rumor. But look, these are what we'll talk about in another video. Pretty much, we are in for an interesting, interesting offseason. The biggest get of the offseason has been Craig McRae as our coach. I can't talk more highly of this guy. Um, you've, you've, if you haven't seen my videos, I'll pop them up in a link somewhere up here. I'm talking about who he is and then um, a live reaction to his unveiling. We are going to be okay. Look, if you take one thing from this video, know that we are going to be okay. We might hurt a little bit. This year fucking hurt. It really, really did hurt. A lot. A lot. Seeing 16 losses. Nathan Buckley leaving, that hurt. Uh, we might see a bit more hurt in the trade period, who knows. But, look, as cliche as it sounds, we just need to trust the process. And, and that's that's all we can do as, as Collingwood supporters. Like, we can create a big hoo-ha, but we're not there. We're not out there running the ball. We're, we're not doing the game plans or anything like that. We just sit back and watch, and we will watch this club unfold a 16th premiership in the next five years. You can take that to the bank. You can absolutely take that to the bank. Look, this has been my really, really quick overview of the um, season. Just a quick rundown of my thoughts about how we went and stuff like that. I've got a lot of good videos coming out. A parody song coming out soon. A couple more interesting videos that I will keep you updated with on Twitter and stuff like that. So make sure you follow me on there. But until then, like, comment, subscribe. Tell your family, tell your friends, tell your pets. And until next time, Double Shackers, I'll see you all later. Ooh la la.